The subject we're going to discuss today is information associated with the location of the fabled philosopher's stone, which according to this information was hidden here in the United States. Now this was a topic I first covered in 2014, and back then I had a co-host and an entirely different channel, but this was the very first story we produced, and after going solo, I always intended to revisit the topic for a new audience. Now we begin with a man named Johann Jacob Zimmermann, a Lutheran minister as well as a mathematician, astronomer, and astrologer who lived in what is now Germany between 1642 and 1693. And besides having witnessed the Great Comet of 1680, he got himself into some trouble with his Lutheran superiors for his belief in millenarianism, which is a belief in a thousand year golden age of peace that depending on your denomination either starts or ends with the second coming of Christ. Now Zimmerman furiously studied chapter 7 of the book of Revelation. He believed that the astronomical signs and wonders he had observed in the sky were signs of the fast approaching end times, which he calculated would occur in the fall of 1694 with the return of Christ. Now, because he wouldn't renounce these beliefs, he and his family were exiled, and after living in five different princedoms, he finally settles in Hamburg, where he finds work as a writer and a teacher. Here, he would also compose works defending the theories of Copernicus. A quick side note, Zimmerman is also mentioned in the works of Isaac Newton. But Zimmerman's beliefs and his refusal to renounce them only resulted in increased persecution. Now, half a world away, in the recently formed Providence of Pennsylvania, located in this new world on the edge of a vast wilderness, a Quaker named William Penn would found a colony on this land, which he obtained by grant due to debts owed to his father by Charles II. Now, I should mention that Pennsylvania is not named after William Penn, but rather his father, Admiral William Penn. Charles II picked the name, and uh, he couldn't be persuaded to change it. William Penn, the son, was worried people would think he named the place after himself. But Penn's colony in the New World had two innovations in regards to government. The first was the creation of a county commission. Uh, it was a, a body of elected people to administer the functions of local government. And the second was religious freedom, and that was a big one. In fact, of all the colonies, it was Pennsylvania which was alone in that it retained religious freedom without limitation from the time of its founding until 1776 and the birth of the United States. Now, this religious freedom would attract all kinds of persecuted groups from across Europe, and it was for this reason that Johann Jacob Zimmermann would lead his 40 followers, comprised of 11 families out of Hamburg, destined for the New World. Now, Zimmermann himself would never live to see if his beliefs concerning the end times were correct, as he would die at the age of 50, while his group of followers, known as the Chapter of Perfection, were preparing to journey from Rotterdam to Philadelphia. And with the sudden death of uh, Zimmerman, leadership of this group fell to one of his disciples, the 21-year-old Johannes Kelpius. He was a university-educated uh, native of Transylvania who was a botanist, an astronomer, an alchemist. And in fact, uh, Zimmerman's followers were all university-educated. Among them were doctors, and lawyers, skilled craftsmen, and they brought with them to this new world vast knowledge of science, theology, language, astronomy, and music. Now, these monks would settle in an area that is still known today as Germantown, as it was the first German settlement in the Americas. They, however, lived in the woods outside of town on the banks of the Wissahickon Creek, where they had constructed a 40-foot by 40-foot tabernacle meeting house, on top of which they placed a telescope to observe the stars for indication of Christ's coming return. And even though, for the most part, they lived in isolation and kept to themselves, devoting themselves to the studies of numerology, astrology, and alchemy, they lived as monks, uh, a life of poverty, prayer, and uh, celibacy. But they always offered free help and assistance to anyone in need, including the native Leni Lenape tribe, which wasn't unusual this time in Pennsylvania because the settlers who came here generally held a virtue of tolerance in pretty high regard. In 1883, Philadelphia would erect a sculpture dedicated to tolerance that depicts William Penn. It's actually on a cliff overlooking these same woods where these monks lived. Well, the end of the world didn't come in 1694, as Zimmerman had believed before his death. However, the group which he founded, which had come to be known as the Society of the Woman of the Wilderness under the leadership of Kelpius, uh, this was also a reference to the book of Revelation, well, these monks thought it was only a matter of miscalculation, and they prepared for the apocalypse to arrive in the year 1700. But as the years passed, the group began to dwindle, and at the time of Kelpius' death, only six of the 40 members remained, most having married or moved away. But those that did remain continued their simple lives of prayer and composing music and gardening and working on their alchemical experiments. So here's the thing about Kelpius. The entire time from his arrival in Philadelphia 
until the day of his death. He lived alone in a small damp cave practicing alchemy. Now, despite the fact that most of the other monks lived in cabins, Kelpius stayed in this cave, and in fact, he would die there. Now, by 1708, Kelpius was dying of tuberculosis. Now, as the legend goes, he called one of his most trusted disciples to his bedside. Close to death, he instructed this assistant to take a locked box down to the banks of the nearby Schuylkill River. And uh, he told him to throw the box in the water. Now, standing on the banks of that river, holding that box, it's said that this man decided to bury it, thinking that it would perhaps be knowledge of some value to future generations. Now, once he returned to the dying Kelpius, the 35-year-old monk raised himself up from his deathbed and, coughing through his tuberculosis, accused his disciple, saying, You have not done as I asked. Shaken by the fact that Kelpius could know the deeds he had committed in secret, the man raced to the banks of the river, dug up the box, and cast it into the water, which reportedly caused a tremendous explosion. Now, as the legend has claimed for 300 years, the contents of that box was the Philosopher's Stone. Well, there's so much more to this story. There's the Horologium Time Machine, Christopher Witt, the Ben Franklin Connection, Count Zinzendorf and the Order of the Mustard Seed, Native American Freemasons, the Moravian Church, Conrad Bissell, the Euphrata Cloister, and the Rosicrucians. It's a lot. So look, let me know what you think of this one. I'm fascinated by it, not only because it's local for, for me, but because it's a strange time in American history when there's numerous fringe religious groups in these odd corners of this gigantic wilderness that was Pennsylvania. And it's got so many connections to these esoteric groups that surface after the Thirty Years' War and before the American Revolution, which of course, you know, has its own Masonic connections. So look, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, at one time I had a co-host, no it wasn't Elena, and a different channel, uh, where, you know, we covered this topic on location, on the banks of the Schuylkill River, in the rain, at the Cave of Kelpius. So, as a special thank you to my Patreon supporters, I'm making that video available exclusively to you on my Patreon page. Also, don't forget to check out the second channel, Dark Sayings. There's a link in the description and in the end cards, and it's the one channel featured on Creepy Little Books, so it's pretty easy to find. I'm doing some increasingly dramatic audiobook readings over there, so check that out and let me know what you think. I want to thank you all so very much for watching. Please subscribe and share this has been The Creepy Little Book. I'm Pete, and until next time, stay creeped out.